Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on to Wonder Woman issue 6, uh, which happens to be the end of the first uh, trade, if you happen to be reading this in trade form. Uh, of course, Connor's reading the omnibus, I think, so he's... <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm reading it on DC Universe, actually. Oh, you're reading DC Universe? Never mind then. Yes, I'm reading the singles. I mean, same effect, essentially, that I don't have trades, but... Yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> This, uh, I was pretty down in the last issue. Uh, I was just actually, Brian Azzarello writing, of course, Tony Atkins is on art again. Um, Which is disappointing that we haven't got Chiang back yet. I think he is back for the next issue. Mm. So, I have to admit, this is, the, the, I think my interest level in this book, it's clear that it's kind of dipping as we go, because this is the one where, the two in a row now, I've struggled really hard to remember, and I have to look at it as we're talking to remind myself what the hell happened in it. Uh, but the gist of it, from what I recall here, is that uh, Wonder Woman has got Poseidon, and she's got a couple others, basically all on a ploy just uh, to kind of dupe uh, Hera, right? Yeah, kind of. Um, so she, she has Poseidon and, and Hades, Yes. Basically, she comes to them. It's like, here's a deal. I'll kind of split Hera with you, and you can one of you can rule in the day, and one of you can rule in the night, essentially. <laughs> uh, but her ploy at the same time is to kind of just get Hera out of the table, so she won't kill Solar and the baby, <laughs> and won't be you know rage kill the the kid. Uh, so she's kind of just using everyone to get what she wants, um, which is very different from what we think of as as Wonder Woman. I, I, I think. Do you know, I think part of my issue with this book, and you know, I stopped reading this back at the time, and I think it's kind of coming clear to me why I kind of fell away from it, because I'm kind of losing interest again now, is I like part of it, A, because it doesn't really feel really have that that hopeful, heroic vibe that I get from Wonder Woman, you know? It's just kind of like how, when I go to Superman, I expect a certain feeling from what Superman should do. Not necessarily all the time, you can have a darker Superman story here or there, but typically speaking, there's a general feeling that I feel like Superman should project. And Wonder Woman's kind of... A similar thing where except maybe hope's the wrong word maybe grace is a better word and i don't necessarily feel the grace from this one but i think the other thing that kind of bugs me about this is that i'm not someone who necessarily loves the sort of mythology that wonder woman plays with i like her and i like a lot of characters in it and i kind of accept you know the mythology of you know the, the gods and all the rest of it but this is changing all of that and it's frustrating for me because i like I, I don't i i feel so unconfident in what i know about it that i'm not even entirely sure when something's changed sometimes and i'm like i don't mm. even know if this is something i am i am i rightfully confused here or is it just me being forgetful like and I it frustrates me one point in this issue that i would say is a significant issue um in that uh i, I don't know if this is an art or a writing problem i don't know if it is from the script or if it is just you know um unclear in the art and mm. how it's portrayed it's when so they they grab the candle off hades head and use it to kind of transport and trap hera it's very unclear what's happening as it's happening i, I you know i didn't quite get the context until afterwards and they kind of talk about it of like oh this is what we've done it's very unclear as to what they're actually doing in the moment and I think that is suffering a little bit, especially as it is the the big moment, you know, the crux of the issue. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. That's fair. She, cause, yeah, well, she's tra tra Diana transports, and then she sort of lures her out to. Uh, where is it? She heals her out to, uh, but so she sort of lures her out, and then she comes back, and then it becomes, oh, this was all a ploy. Everything with these gods was just a ploy to get her in this position, uh, more than yeah. anything else. Uh, there is a sort of weird sort of moment here at the end where uh, Zola is sort of lured down by what looks like her mother, but it turns out to actually be something else. Something else, yeah, some monster of some kind. Some... Yeah, we, we we don't know yet, so yeah. that's all right. So yeah, like, and some of the action is good, like the fighting on the bridge with the centaurs and uh, you know the Poseidon stuff. I mean, the, like the the action looks good. Like I can't really fault the action, uh, but. I have to admit, from, from a, just from what the story is doing perspective, like I find myself kind of uh, apathetic at this point, and I think that's probably why I, dropped, I stopped reading in the first place. Now I'm not going to say I'm stopping here. Like we can keep going. It's fine. It's just no, it might win you. It might win you back. It might win me back. Yeah, but I, I think um, I'm going to try and not just rag on it when we talk about it because I'll just get old fast um, mm. and just point out if there's any specific that I either like or dislike. Uh, so I feel like I've done that. I mean, the art's fine. It's not as good as Chang, obviously. But yeah, it's it's clearly trying to emulate Chang's style, and it does a reasonable job of that. Um, 
I think it does a, a good job with characters like Lennox in this issue, you know, like with him with the, the cigarette constantly trying to light it off like Hades head. Um, because Hades is the ca- melting candle head in this, which I kind of like that design. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it treats that kind of well. Um, but like I said, I think uh, most of the art is solid. There is just that one, I think it's like two pages where I'm like, what, what exactly is happening here? And it isn't until they explain it afterwards that it becomes clear that it's a real problem. And like I, said, I don't know who to blame for that. I don't want to just blame the artist because, you know, Tony Higgins is a fill-in artist. I don't want to just blame him on it because... Oh, well, Chang would have covered this, uh, because I don't know that. Uh, this may have been unclear in, in, whatever, uh, in, in Azarello's script. Uh, I, I really don't know. Um, I think it, it's, it's those two pages being the, the climax of the issue that make this the weakest issue for me so far. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, that's, that's the big moment of, this is the plan all coming together, and I'm like, what, what just happened? Yeah, for me, this was kind of just on par with last issue, which I also wasn't that keen on. But it was just kind of, you know, it was, had some nice moments of action or whatever, but the actual gist of what it was doing, I wasn't super into. I, f- I, f- yeah. I, f- I, f- I feel like the, the, the conflict with Hera could have been better. Like, because that last issue, they spent like half the issue just sitting around a table talking about it, and I still feel like it didn't do enough to make me understand exactly what was going on. <laughs> like, Okay, I don't quite have that complaint personally, but... Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, again, it's it's one of these things where once you get to the point of apathy, it's just sometimes I'm not necessarily taking in details as much as I would otherwise be. Hmm. Uh, no, that, that, that is true. I, I, I know that feeling. Um, not necessarily in this book, but in general. Yeah, so... Uh, no, I'll keep giving it a chance. I'll see how issue 7 is, but I'm not... Yeah. I'm not super I, I do like it. how it ends where, so, you know, the Zola and, and the baby were stolen. Um by Hades. I don't know if it was Hades himself because it was, it didn't look like him, but uh, whatever it was was for Hades and Hades like, you know, okay, you know, you know, fulfill your bargain that we made with, you know, ruling, um, you know, the, the heavens. Uh, or, or, you know, you'll be the last of Zeus's bloodline, you know, which is a pretty clear threat. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't get much clearer. Yeah, we're giving it. Um, I am going to give it just a 6.5. Yeah. I don't know what I gave the last one. I think it was about five. I'll give it a five again. <laughs> five out of ten. Uh, no, not, not a train wreck by any means, but it's just not really appealing to me all that much.